Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worms Rock is secure. The preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. One final night in the open air, and then back to the city. Rest while you can. I fear that quite a bit of work awaits us. The Absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angering Mistra further, I'm glad it didn't come to that. Given what has come to light. Hardly. I'm more than glad to leave that place behind. The Elder Brain. But more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power, the ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. I know what nearly happened, and I'm sorry for putting you in that position. But I've stepped back from the precipice now. I've seen what may prove to be another way. A better way. 
That crown sits on our gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Ah, indeed. The journey awaits. One foot in front of the other is tried and true, I find. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sex are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of Mind Flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the Dream Visitor's protection. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the Dead Three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Hear me. <sighs> the reckoning is upon us. The city thirsts for domination. March. Join. We're under attack. Help me.
against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Forces are weakened by their assault, but with your help, we can turn this around. Destroy the guard. I will subdue their master. attempts to be subtle, the mind flare's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a walk pup learning to walk. You must be joking. I am telling you my thoughts directly into your head. But if you insist on taking a look for yourself, be my guest. Nothing colorful existence to date could have prepared you for this. As the horror subsides, you are left with only one coherent thought. You must do whatever you can to subdue the Githyanki. Don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. 
Without me, you would be a slave to the Absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers! You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. thrall like any other but i was fortunate i broke free and started a new life in my old city i sustained myself on criminals unglamorous but there are plenty of them rarely missed and they fueled me when i did my work i had the good fortune to meet duke stillman we formed a partnership and through her I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself. Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've been. His hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacheth declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlacheth wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prism. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince, and if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. I do not have the privilege of knowing the answer, but the consequences are clear enough. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. 
Vlacket is eternal. My people would not be swayed by this... this false prince. A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Black Kith. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus, and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, he feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic, and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. Scruff! Whatever this gig offers is no gift to you. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is... Truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. Coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. 
It's yearning almost unbearable. Mm. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the brain, and bring it under our control. of the mother, the traitor prince, the Laxerai. He sought Vlakit's head in a geek ploy for her throne. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our geek slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Orpheus was, is, Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlakith I. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the traitor's with us. Controlled by that repugnant Illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlakith's dominion to his Geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. We find a way to enter the prism and slay Orpheus. He is a Geich puppet cloaked in Githyanki skin and the most powerful mind master known to my people. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more. And one by one, the plains would fall to the Geich. Find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. Baldur's Gate is right over the hills, and so is Kazador. Kazador and his right of profane ascension. An imperial soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their name. Of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Kazador has done is that he did it to me. With a 
the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> Doesn't it sound delightful? For the lucky little vampire on the winning side. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. All I'm saying is, let's be clever about it. If an opportunity arises for me to become a more magnificent bastard than I already am, why turn it down? Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Casador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. My, my, you sweetheart. Then there isn't a moment to waste. If we don't find my brethren, They'll find us, likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Casadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey.